everybody. Welcome to um, our Yarn Crafting Fridays. My name's Julie and I blog over at Julie Measures. I'm a craft and DIY um, and recipe blogger and here at Quirky Mama on Fridays we do yarn crafting and we alternate between uh, learning to crochet and learning to knit. This week is a learning to knit week so if you have been wanting to learn how to knit, this video is for you. Um, or if you want to brush up on your knitting skills, maybe you haven't done it in a while, um, welcome and glad you're here. Um, as everybody's kind of joining in, let me know um, if you've knitted before, if you're a crocheter, um, kind of what your experience maybe is with yarn crafts. And if you have a friend that wants to learn how to knit, um, we're getting a cold weather, oh, few days here in Texas where I am. Um, and so it's a great time to make yourself some some warm weather accessories. Hi Jessica, welcome. I'm glad you guys are joining in. We're doing uh, knitting today, so if you happen, you know, to have some yarn or things around, you can grab those. Um, hi Nadine, I'm so glad you're here. Welcome Pamela. Um, for hi Jennifer, I'm so glad you guys are here and want to learn how to knit. Um, this is our third-ish knitting video. Um, so far we've done videos on how to cast on, which casting on is in knitting is just getting the yarn um, onto your needles. And then in knitting there are two main stitches. That's the knit stitch and the purl stitch. Um, Crystal asked the difference between knitting and crocheting. Um, I actually have learned to crochet videos on my channel. Welcome from Italy. Um, I have some learn to crochet videos on my YouTube channel as well as learn to knit videos. Um, the main difference, knitting uses um, two needles, um, negative six degrees Celsius in Norwich, Wild Terra, um, in the UK. So we're um, not that cold today, but um, it is unseasonably cold for where I live um, in, near Dallas, Texas. Um, hi from Brazil. Um, hi Jasmine. So after we do the live video here, um, you can come back and watch this again. Or I also post the finished videos on my YouTube channel. So you can um, watch, you know, rewatch it. Um, repetition is key with knitting and crochet. And if this is the first knitting video you've watched, you can go back and watch um, the pre previous knitting videos that we've done as well so that you can um, know everything we've done to this point. Um, welcome, guys. Indiana, New York. Um, it sounds cold in New York. I saw some, some video on the news this morning. Um, so for knitting, we want, you know, a pair of knitting needles. Um, I'm going to... These look a little bit scary. These have points on either end. These are called double pointed knitting needles. Double points. Um, but I'm going to use them today just like we would um, straight knitting needles. Because we're only working with a few stitches for our project today, um, these are nice and short and just easy for me to work with. Um, so knitting needles, and then I've just got a tiny little ball of yarn. Um, so our finished project today that we're working on is this really cute little bow necklace. So, just that. And it's so easy, guys. So easy. Um, so that's what, that's our, our finished, what we're working towards today. Um, so if you haven't knit with us, they look dangerous. Um, they're not. They're really fun, I promise. Um, if you haven't um, knit with me before, like I said when we started, I've done a couple videos already with our knitting, um, and that was casting on. And I mentioned that was just the method of getting the yarn onto the knitting needle. And so um, we did uh, like three different ways to cast on. There are dozens I mean, literally dozens um, of ways to cast on. So we'll do another one today as we when we start our project and we start knitting. But I wanted to kind of um, 
do a little show and tell for a second. So the only stitch we've really done so far is the knit stitch. And when you knit, so there's two um, arm and crochet, arm crochet and knitting. Uh, yeah, those are fun, Kathy. Okay, so as there are really two main stitches in knitting that you can combine in tons of different ways to come up with different stuff. But when you do just one stitch um, for a whole piece, the fabric that you end up with is something called garter stitch. So, for example, a couple weeks ago we, I showed you the knit stitch. So if you knit every stitch in every row, you get a piece of fabric that looks like this. This is garter stitch. Hi, Holly! Another Texas person, yay! Um, so this looks garter stitch. So today we're going to talk about the purl stitch and if you do that stitch um, in every stitch in every row, you also get garter stitch. So a couple weeks ago we did a garter stitch um, coffee cozy and we did that using the knit stitch. So today we're going to make this necklace and we're going to do the purl stitch but it ends up looking the same. However, when you combine the knit stitch and the purl stitch, then you get fabric that looks like this. And this might be more what you think about when you think about knitting. So you get these little pieces. They look kind of like, if I could get it to focus, like V's. Anyway, so that's the front of the knitting piece. And then the other side would be what we call the pearl side. There's like something stuck to mine. And it's kind of bumpy. So when you combine knitting and purling, then you get this. If you only knit or only purl, you get fabric that looks like this. So, so far we've done knitting. Today we're gonna add purling, but we're just gonna do purling. And then on our next knitting video, we'll combine the two and do a project with that. Okay. Now that everybody's joined in and we've done a little welcome, um, if you've watched before, um, I like to flip the video around so that you can see my hands um, and really focus on um, the yarn crafting. So if you'll give me just a second, we have a little moment as I move my camera around, so talk amongst each other and you're going to get a nice shot of my ceiling as I flip this around. So there's my ceiling back here in my office. I'm going to move my camera. So sometimes I'm noticing it gives me a different view than what you guys are getting. So I'm trying to not have the feet of my tripod in the video. If they are there, I'm sorry. I'm not seeing them in my screen. But as I said, Sometimes when I come back and watch these replays, I'm like, that's not what it looked like. Why is it? Why is this green different? I don't know why it does that to me. Okay. So here, this was our piece that's all pearl. See, I even made myself little notes. All pearl, all knit, but they look the same. All right. So to work on our, see, if you're just joining, this is our project today. We're doing, going to talk about the purl stitch and make this really cute little bow. I put mine on a necklace. Um, I mean, you could totally make this like a bow tie and wear it. Um, a friend of mine, her dog, um, for Christmas, she got him this cute little bow tie that just had like an elastic on it that slipped on his collar. Um, and we talked about how we need to make him bow ties for every holiday now. He needs to be seasonable. So, it's cute. Um, put it on a headband. I'm going to all sorts of little, add a little new bow to, to your wardrobe. Alright, so I'm grabbing my knitting needles. And my yarn. So, um, I'm using, these are actually double pointed needles, point on each end, but I'm going to use 
um, them just like straight knitting needles, which would have um, kind of a piece on the end here. So don't be intimidated. In a future video, we will talk about how to use double points of needles. Yeah, this yarn is really sparkly. Bow ties for kitties, yes. That would be really cute on my cat's collar. I'm sure he would love it. <laughs> anyway, yeah, this yarn is, for beginning knitters, I always recommend just a real basic yarn, kind of a medium weight, um, not too thick, not too thin. Um, it's what you'll find at most craft stores. Um, this one does have like sequins and sparkles in it, and it's really fun. Um, and it's not too hard to knit with. Add some pizzazz to your outfit. Okay, so I've got my yarn. I don't really need my scissors yet. And we're going to cast on. So we're going to put the yarn onto our needles. Um, today I'm going to do a um, kind of a knit on cast on. So I start with a slip stitch. Um, if you've watched before, the yarn that is connected to the, the piece of yarn on the side of the yarn that's connected to my yarn ball is called my working yarn. And then this is the, the tail end of my yarn. So I hold it like this, I flip it over so the short side is on top, the long is underneath, I reach through and grab it, that makes a little slip knot. Um, you can go back and watch some of the other knitting or crochet videos. And I do that several times. Okay, and we want this, um, you know, pulled down but not so tight that I can't slip another needle through there. All right. Now, we've also, if you watch some of the other videos, um, there's a couple different ways to hold your knitting. Um, I use the continental style of knitting, um, which means that I am actually right-handed but I hold the yarn in my left hand. There are lots of ways to hold your yarn. I like to run it through a couple fingers. Some people like to wrap it around. Anything that just gives you a little bit of tension um, as you're knitting is what you want to go for. So play around with it. Um, so to cast on, this is a knit on cast on. So I've got my slip stitch that's over here on my left needle. No matter how you hold your yarn, you need this slip stitch on the needle in your left hand. Then with the right needle, you'll insert it and it's going to go back behind the needle, the left needle. So the right needle is in back, the left needle is in front. And then I'm essentially making a knit stitch and pulling it through. And then I put it back on that left needle. Okay, let's do that again. So if you watch the knitting video, this is, I'm making a knit stitch. I'm inserting the right needle behind the left one. I've got my yarn wrapped over kind of the top and I'm guiding it through that loop and I'm putting it on back on the needle. Um, to make the bow necklace I need to cast on six. We count the slip stitches one, two, three. So insert the needle, do this pull it through and put it back on. Okay, a lot of knitters, especially in the US, hold their knitting over here in their right hand. As I said, I hold it in my left hand, it's the continental style. You can also do it this way. I am not as good at doing it this way, it might look a little more awkward. You are previously warned. Um, so, you can slip in the needle, then I would wrap this, so I've still got the yarn coming across, and I am pulling it, and I'm kind of using my fingers in here to guide it through, 
and I'm putting it back on. Okay, I'm going to do that one more time. So insert, kind of pinching both needles with my left hand. Um, this style of holding the yarn in your right hand is also called throwing or picking. So I'm kind of throwing the yarn around. See, I'm a little more awkward doing it this way. For me. And guiding it through. Where'd you go? No, I lost you. We're going to do it again. Grabbing it. And. Sorry, guys. Holding it. Don't lose you. There we go. Through. And then I put that on that left knee. Alright, then I have my six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Now we always work um, the, the stitches that need to be made are always on the left needle and we're working them onto the right needle. Okay? So now we're going to do the purl stitch. For the purl stitch, I have my yarn in front and I insert my needle like this. So if you guys have some friends that you know want to learn how to knit, make sure to share the video with them. Alright, so for the knit stitch that we did to cast on, my right needle was behind the left one. For this purl stitch, the right needle is in front. So I've inserted it and it is in front of the left needle. I've got my yarn, it's coming over the top, and I am unsuccessfully <laughs> dragging it through and then moving it over. Right? So that is one purl stitch. So insert the right needle is in front of the left needle. I'm bringing the yarn over the top. I'm kind of using this finger to help guide and bringing it through. And this is the purl stitch. Insert yarn, bringing it through. Sometimes this first row is kind of the most fiddly. Insert over, bringing it through. Insert over, oh, bringing it through. Insert over, bringing it through. Okay, those are our six stitches. Now we've transferred the yarn from the left needle to the right. You would turn your needle. So now the right needle becomes the left needle. And we go back the other way. I need my yarn in front. And I would continue. So let's just keep going here. This is... Um, I love a hobby like this. It can keep my hands busy. Um, a simple, small project like this is easy to transport. So we're just continuing this one stitch. This is the purl stitch. If you haven't knitted before, a couple weeks ago we did the knit stitch. Today we're just doing this one stitch. And this whole project uses this one stitch so that you get lots of practice with it. Um, the best thing about knitting and crocheting you can do is repetition. There's a reason that a lot of um, beginning of projects are things like washcloths because you just need to repeat that stitch over and over again. And then you get a nice little square. Okay, so I've got these bumps. That's what I want. That's my purl stitch. Flip it around and we keep going. 
So I'm going to do one more row and then I'll flip it and hold the yarn in the other hand so you can see how that looks. So this is the continental style of knitting. Um, I am right handed but I prefer to knit this way. I taught myself how to knit and uh, to me it just was easier to hold the yarn here in my left hand. I think maybe I learned to crochet first. I don't know if that has anything to do with it because that's how I hold the yarn to crochet. So right needle goes in front, yarn comes over and through. Right needle goes in, over, and I bring that loop through. In, that tail back there. That's the bottom part of my, this is from the slip knot. That needs to stay at the bottom. And I'm just working my purl stitches all the way across. So, and then as you go, you know, we started with six. Do I still have six stitches? One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, sometimes extra the needle might insert funny and pull up another loop or you know things happen the yarn gets wrapped around and it looks like another loop um, so as you're going counting your stitches and making sure you're still where you expect it to be um, they do have for big projects I love using stitch markers um, and they help keep track of where you are where you're going there are apps for your phone that are stitch counters and things. Okay, let me move this around and make this the opposite of how I usually do it. Okay, so I've got my yarn in front, insert, kind of hold these with this hand, wrap this, and then bring it through. Like I said, there are a couple different ways to hold the yarn. This is um, called throwing. Um, to me, it's a little more... See, I dropped that. Um, to me, it just feels a little more cumbersome. But um, the majority of people in the U.S. do use this method for knitting. Um, I don't know, in other parts of the world, I think the way that I do it is more common, but thank you guys for sharing the knit video today. Um, we do these every Friday at 10 a.m. Central Time, um, whatever time that is for you, and we alternate between knitting videos and crochet videos and other fun yarn crafting things that we're doing. So at the holidays, we did how to wrap gifts with yarn. Um, so wrapping and going. So that's our purl stitch. And then you just keep working this. Um, I said this is, I prefer to hold my yarn over here like this. And, oh, sorry. See, I'm doing a knit stitch. That's not what we're doing today. We're doing a purl stitch. Um, if you are just tuning in, today we're doing the purl stitch. We have I have some other videos that show how to cast on in more detail, and then another video that is the knit stitch in more detail. So this is our purl stitch today. So to make our bow, we just keep doing that until the piece measures about four to four and a half inches is how far I got mine. So I'm going to do one more row here, purl, purl, purl stitch. So no matter how you hold your yarn, you're going right needle in front, wrap it around, and bring it through. Right needle in front, wrap your yarn, bring it through. Wrap, and bring it through. Alright, so I'm going to we'll keep doing that. Uh, until my piece I said measured about this is about four and a half inches so 
And I'm actually, to get kind of a bigger thickness, I'm using two strands of this really thin yarn um, held twisted together like it's one strand of yarn. So when the pe when you're when you've purled and it's over four inches, the last thing you need to do is bind off, and that's how we finish our piece. So we start by doing a purl stitch. And then we do one more purl stitch. And then I use my needle to pick up, so I have two stitches on my right needle. I use the left needle to pick up the first stitch that I made and bring it over the second stitch. Okay, now I need to make another purl stitch so that I have two over here on my right needle. And then again, I grab the one that is furthest to the right and bring it over and off. And usually you do, it's called bind off in pattern. So whatever stitch you've been working is the same stitch to bind off. So purl, bring this over. this, bring this first stitch over, and now I'm down to one stitch over here, purl that, and bring it over. Okay, now I have one stitch left on my needle, and I need to cut the tail end of my yarn. And I'm going to leave a pretty long tail because I need to stitch it up. So I'm going to pull this up a little bit. And similar to a slip stitch, I'm pulling this through and that knots it off. Then I have a tapestry needle. This is just a blunt, um, large eyed needle. Um, they have them in these metal ones. They also have um, plastic ones, and I'm just going to hold the ends together, and this doesn't have to be neat because we're going to cover it up, but I'm just going to um, whip stitch this together. I just don't, I just want it attached to each other. So we're going to cover this up. It doesn't have to look great. Um, we just need it to to combine itself. Okay, that's good. Then I'm going to keep that seam in the middle and then I'm wrapping my yarn around the center and that's what's going to turn it into a bow. Um, so that's another reason to leave the tail long so that after you stitch it up you can just use that to wrap. And then I would, um, oh I didn't grab a thing, okay, um, knot these ends. Um, I actually use a crochet hook so I'm gonna go grab one. Hold on one second. I've got my pile of, oh, my, my pile of uh, crochet hooks just out of reach. So, if I could find. And now they're dropping on the floor. Okay. Um, to me, a crochet hook just makes this super easy to. Pull my yarn through the back here and knot it, tie it off within itself. Okay. And then I just can even run these ends back through again. 
and hide them back there. So, okay. Um, there's our little bow. Got one little, I'm gonna trim a little long end that's sticking out after I tucked it in. So there's our bow. Um, for the chain, I just bought, this is a complete chain that I picked up at the craft store and I, I can even undo this for you. I just ran it through the center of the bow. And then that was it. Um, you, if you wanted to use jump rings, um, if you have jewelry making supplies, you could definitely, you know, attach some jump rings to the ends and have the chain come that way. But if you don't have jewelry making supplies, it hangs really nicely just like that in the middle. And that's our finished project today for learning how to make the pearl stitch. So I'm going to flip this back around and see if you guys have any um, yarn questions, knit or crochet questions, questions about yarn. Um, usually your yarn will tell you what the recommended uh, needle size is for that thickness of yarn. The, cat, the six stitches that I recommended for this bow project was based on kind of a medium weight yarn. If you have a really thin yarn, you might want to add more, but you'll be able to judge that. Um, the cast on stitches is the width here of the bow because we made it this way and then folded it over so as you're casting on you can kind of see you know is this the size that I want do I want it bigger do I want it smaller and um, if you do it smaller you might want to not make it as long um, it's very customizable you can do it in a bunch of different colors um, you don't have to make it a necklace it could be a hair bow um, you know, if you have a little, I don't have any little girls, but a cute little hair bow, um, put it on a headband, put it on your pet, your cat collar, your dog collar, um, anywhere that needs a little bow, add a little bow, a bow tie. I have boys at my house, so, um, they have some handmade knit and crochet bow ties that I've made for them. So, um, really cool. You know, quick, a good way to practice a new stitch. And um, next week we'll, we'll go back. We'll probably do some crocheting next week. If you missed last week, um, we made, this was our crochet project last week. It was this double crochet um, cowl um, in infinity. Just slip it over your head. Um, nice and big and bulky and warm. Also quick. Um, as we're learning these stitches, I'm really trying to, you know, make sure there's projects that we can make together that are um, simple and give you something fun and so you can take that new skill that you're learning and say, hey, look, I made this, um, instead of, hey, look, I practiced a knit stitch and now I have a zillion washcloths. So um, you can find me on at, here on Facebook at Julie Measures. Um, you can find my YouTube channel um, under the same name. I have all of our knit and crochet videos that we've made so far there. If you need to catch up, if you miss some of this and you need, um, or you just need a refresher, hey, how did I, ca how do we cast on again? Um, go find that. Make sure to share this with your friends that want to learn how to knit or crochet. Um, and you can always email me or message me with any questions as you're working through your projects. And that's it. Have a great Friday. I'm so glad that you came and um, hanging out and do yarn crafts with me. And I look forward to seeing you guys again next week. Talk to you later. Bye.